The August primary exactly one week away where voters will choose their party's candidates for the November general election. One of the nation's most closely watched primary races is right here in West Michigan, this newly drawn third district. Aruta Olsenida joins us now to talk about this race and explain why we have new districts this year. Good morning, Ruta. Good morning, you guys. Well, every 10 years, Michigan's political districts are redrawn, reflecting the latest census counts. In previous years, state legislators handled all of the redistricting, which for the past several decades has been Republican led. But in 2018, for the first time ever, a constitutional amendment transferred that power to an independent citizen led group made up of 13 people, four Republicans, four Democrats, and five members not belonging to any major political party. And they voted on the new districts that you see here. So, due to population changes, Michigan actually lost a district, went from 14 to 13. And the makeup has drastically changed across the board, especially in the third congressional district in West Michigan, where the race will be a must watch. Voters in Michigan are used to voting in districts that have been around for years. And for the most part, the last 30 or 40 years, the districts have been roughly the same. But due to the redrawing of district lines by the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission, things will look different this upcoming election. New districts, new makeups, and new candidates. And this especially holds true for Michigan's third congressional district. The district used to cover most of Kent County along with Ionia, Barrie, and Calhoun as well. Now it still represents most of Kent County, but goes west all the way to the lake shore with parts of Muskegon and and Ottawa counties completely changing the makeup of the district. So that all of a sudden gives you more Democratic voters and makes the district from pretty safe Republican to really a toss up Republican or Democrat. A Democrat hasn't represented the third district since 1993. And with the political maps pushing it into a toss up, the upcoming primary election becomes all the more crucial. As Republican incumbent Peter Meyer faces off against Trump endorsed challenger John Gibbs. You know, we will have a, a spirited race here in West Michigan. Spirited is a good word for it, but Gibbs has other words for his challenger. Peter Meyer has no because the Republicans that feel betrayed by him will never support him in the general election. The betrayal Gibbs is referring to is Meyer's vote to impeach former President Trump after the January 6th insurrection. Several local GOP organizations, including Muskegon County GOP, dropped their support for the congressman. Meyer stands by his decision. January 6th was my third day in office. That uh, it was a dark and shameful day for the country. Gibbs, originally from Michigan, worked under the Trump administration administration in D.C. and was recruited by Trump staffers to move back to Michigan and run against Meyer in the primary. Yeah, um, the Trump endorsement, no doubt, is a positive thing for good reasons. Back in April, a Detroit regional chamber poll showed that nearly 60 percent of Michigan Republican voters said a Trump endorsement would be important in how they voted in the gubernatorial primary. Meyer isn't swayed by the statistic. I think it's important that members of Congress be consistent. I think it's important that members of Congress tell the truth to their constituents and, and don't kind of wink and nod at things they don't believe. Although similar in most ideals like being pro-life and being frustrated with Biden's policies, the two candidates, of course, differ in their support for Trump and the 2020 election results. Gibbs still firmly believes the 2020 election was stolen. Such claims of election fraud have been disproven at local, state and federal levels. But Gibbs isn't sure he would accept the results of this upcoming primary election if he lost to Meyer either. Do you believe this upcoming election will be free and fair? Well, I believe that there's going to be lots of poll challengers and poll watchers out there and election inspectors and uh, maybe other folks looking at the election to make sure it is. Um, so that remains to be seen. No matter who wins the primary on August 2nd, the winner will face off against Democratic challenger Hillary Skolton, and that race will be the one to watch in this new toss-up district. Journalists and political science scholars and others are looking at what's going on because it's, they believe it kind of indicates the future of both parties. So there'll be a lot of attention to this race.
Remember, the Michigan primary is August 2nd, just a week away now. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Online registration is now closed, but you can still register in person at your local clerk's office. The last day to request an absentee ballot online or by mail is this Friday. Reporting live in studio, Rudolph Sinaita, Fox 17 News.